Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos Week 10. Alex, congratulations on getting a W. I know that that's not something you're used to. So I just want to take this time to congratulate you on your less than one point win. You got to be kiddling me. I think my team sorely missed George Kittle. And I think that they will sorely miss him for the rest of the season. But how does it feel? How does it feel to yeah, get your second win? My uh, wonderful one, formerly one in seven roster, was very happy to get Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Jones back. So, you know, I, I didn't, we were texting last night during the game. You were waiting on a kicker to score an extra, one extra point uh, with Will Will Lutz. Lutz. And they kneeled down when they could have kicked the field goal. And honestly, um, I, I still don't know what to do. Um, I, I keep checking and looking to see if there's a stack correction because I feel like one's coming. So I lose by less than a, than two points for the eighth time this year across my two leagues. So, um, yeah, honestly, uh, I, I won't, I won't lie. Um, it feels really damn good, especially to beat you. Thanks. Yeah. There's so many things like, you know, George Kittle, not playing, uh, Debo, not playing excuse, um, excuse me, switching tight ends that I had locked in. Because if God, I had Dalton Schultz in, who would have gotten me the extra point that I needed, oh, and said I started Jordan Akins, that sucks. Oh, jeez. Um, oh no. Yeah. So defensive oh, plays. I play boy. the Washington defense. Got me four points. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, only the second game in Daniel Jones's career that he didn't have a turnover. The other one was also against the Washington football team. You you do realize that I started Nick Foles and beat you. Right. I mean, can we, I mean, uh, that is just so wonderful. I started, I'm just, I'm just, it brings me so much joy. Yeah. I started three of the top seven scoring receivers this week and lost. So there you go. Couldn't get it done. <sighs> yep, I'm too good. There you go. Wow. I am the Sacco. I'll give you I, this dub. I am the best Sacco. And if you're two and seven team finds a Even miracle way. Or, yeah. Whatever I am. If your two and seventeen yeah. finds a miracle way to make the playoffs, then I'll just get the W back then. So it'll be great. <clears throat> I doubt it. If I get in, I, nobody's beating me. So <laughs> all right. So uh first podcast of the week, as you guys all know, we talk waivers for the first podcast of the week. So let's go ahead and start off with our quarterbacks. Um, I really only have one oh yeah. I really only have one quarterback ad this week. It is oh, I'm Tua. waving. Oh, we're waivers. <laughs> I only have one quarterback ad this week. It is Tua Tagovailoa. He's rostered in about 20% of leagues. He went 20 for 28 and two scores plus seven for 35 on the ground, scoring over more or scoring more mm-hmm. than 21 fantasy points this week. Um, then or, or excuse me, now last week in week nine. And then on tap for week 10, the Miami Dolphins have the Los Angeles Chargers who are currently giving up the fourth most fantasy points to to quarterbacks. And so I think Tua is a fine p- plug and play if you're desperate. So there you go. That's that's my quarterback yeah, out of the absolutely. week. He's my streamer. <clears throat> yeah, it's... It sucks for him that Preston Wilson got hurt and got carted off with a foot injury. Um, otherwise, like, I mean, I want to see the dude be great. It seems like this rookie class is a is you know potentially an all timer um, between Herbert and Tua and Burrow, uh, and the Bears have Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles. Yeah, I just it is really just too bad about Preston Williams getting hurt, but oh well. It's just the year of the injury. Yeah, it really stinks. But I mean, yeah, I mean, may- maybe you'll see more Parker. You'll see more Gasicki. Um, but yeah, that that stinks. And I mean, Tua didn't even have his top two running backs healthy either. Um, so we'll see 
kind of what that offense looks like. They it seems like they have a good defense. So um, if they're able to kind of let Tua do his thing, um, you know, they they said that they weren't starting Tua just to see what he had. They thought that he would be better than Ryan Fitzpatrick, and I mean, he won them the game yesterday as much as anything. Let's uh, let's dive into some more of these running back injuries that you mentioned. Let's start with. Christian McCaffrey uh, deemed day to day by his coach, Matt oh. Rule, after hurting his shoulder in his return for the first time in what, five weeks, six weeks? Um, Mike Davis was dropped in more than like 28% of ESPN leagues. <laughs> yeah, it's so, crazy. There's a chance Mike Davis could be it's available crazy. in your league. If he is, then you really need to pick him up. Because he's an RB1, like top five RB, if uh, Christian McCaffrey is unable to go this week. So he is my priority running back ad. It's, he's still rostered in more than 60% of leagues, but he was dropped in almost 30% of them. So maybe he was dropped in yours. Just go check the waiver wire. Yep. Yep. So. 69.8% rostered. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> thank you appreciate that <laughs> uh, next we have David Johnson went out with a concussion back up Duke Johnson uh, could potentially have an expanded role if he is to miss week 10 uh, Alex are you spending well yep. are you spending any fab I guess real quick, are you if Mike Davis is available, how much fab are you spending on Mike Davis? Um I mean, we don't know. I mean, Chris McCaffrey is probably gonna be back. Um, you know, if anything, it's a week thing. We'll know more tomorrow. Uh or Wednesday, I believe we'll find out more uh, when the coach talks again. I think he's getting an MRI. Um, I mean it's a good question on Mike Davis. I mean, he's he's RB12 on the year. Uh, he didn't do anything week one. He still had six points yesterday um, during week nine. Um, so he, he does have value even when CMC plays. Um, so, I mean, if he's available, uh, you're probably throwing 25% at him. Wow, that's high. Um, I don't think I'd go that Just high. because he has value. and uh, Yeah, but it doesn't... It doesn't seem like McCaffrey can stay healthy this year. Um, if, if he's out for a week, I think you can start going that high if you need to win and it's week 10. And um, he does have, he is playable um, even if McCaffrey's playing. Mm -hmm. All right. Playable, and then for David playable. Johnson, if he's out with his concussion, Duke Johnson had 16 rushing attempts for 41 yards plus four receptions for 32 yards through the air. So 20 touches. What, if anything, are you looking to spend on Duke Johnson if David Johnson can't get healthy enough in time to play week 10? Yeah, so it's probably one week with the concussion, right? Um, so again, he might be a 20% guy too, just for the one week. Um, and they are he, at the uh, Texans. Or I'm sorry, they're at the Browns. No, they're at Cle yeah, at Cleveland. Um, so I mean, he he did have five catches uh, week seven before the bye, four catches this past weekend, I, and obviously David Johnson got hurt. But you know, if they're going to try to start getting him the ball more, which historically he's been a useful weapon for Deshaun Watson out of the backfield, and he hasn't done much this this year. Um, so maybe they're making a concerted effort to get him the ball more, and obviously he ran the ball more because David Johnson wasn't playing. Um, so yeah, if David Johnson, so here's the thing: we don't know if David Johnson's gonna 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 come back and play with a concussion. I'm going to make the assumption that most players come back, unless it's like a brutal hit like Andy Dalton had, right? So sure for your David Montgomerys, for your David Johnsons this week, I'm assuming that they're probably going to be cleared by Sunday, um, and so. <sighs> I mean, if he were to not play, then I think he's in the 20% range, but I think David Johnson will play. And so I think Duke Johnson is less than a 5% bid because I'm assuming David Johnson's coming back. I like that. I think that that's probably a good, I'd say that's probably a fair number. Um, 
with with all of these guys that we're going to talk about today, these like Duke Johnson is probably lower. The concussion replacement players are lower on my priority just because I think that there's a good chance the guys come back in time yeah. to play. Um, now, yep. what I would say is next up, we have another concussion sufferer, and that's David Montgomery went out with a concussion. Enter Ryan Nall. Uh, the Bears play the Vikings on Monday night <laughs> football. And in Montgomery's absence, after he went out with a concussion, Ryan Nall caught all four of his targets for 35 yards and a score. Uh, he did not have a rushing attempt. Why don't they use David Montgomery like that? Right. I mean, you put his back up in and all of a sudden you throw him the ball all the time, but you can't do that with your starting running back. Come on. <laughs> so are you even bidding on Sour Ryan Nall? Montgomery owner over here? Are you bidding on Ryan Nall? Um, no, no, I think he's a zero bid. And the only way that you would pick him up is if you had Montgomery and you had to play one of them on Monday night. So like if, if you did not have a better choice to put in in your flex spot for Montgomery and you were like, well, I mean, I'm going to play the Bears running back. So you can either pick Ryan Nall up or even Cordero Patterson um, to, to play in case Montgomery doesn't play. Then, yeah, I think it's I think it's a zero bid. I think I agree. Um, yeah, I don't think I would even look to try to look to try to pick him up. Um, and then our next injury replacement. No, John, it's, it's, it's only Montgomery owners. Yeah. Our next injury replacement is Justin Jackson played on the first drive, did not have a touch, but went out with a knee injury, did not return. Enter Kalen Balage. <laughs> <laughs> the newcomer played almost 40% of the team's offensive snaps. Uh, he led the Chargers with 15 rushes for 69 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Joshua Kelly played more snaps, but only saw 14 touches to Balazs' 17. So, I mean, if there was ever a chance for Josh Kelly to excel, you lose the top two guys, and then you're stuck behind Kalen Balazs, who the Chargers signed like a week ago. So that just, I mean, that sucks. He, uh, yeah, his last name should be Sackage uh, in honor in honor of us, of course. Um, I um, which one? Who are we talking? Who I, uh, are you talking just, about? Well, I like and forget it. That, <laughs> it's a it's a really stupid <laughs> Paul Sack joke. Um, sorry. Um, are you bidding anything <laughs> on Kalen Balage? Um, no. Really? No. Not even a zero bid after Absolutely he led not. the team? When does Austin, when does Austin Eckler come back, man? <laughs> that whole backfield sucks. <laughs> oh, the hate is so real. So, uh, had... Coach Anthony Lane said, said three weeks ago that Austin Eckler will be back later, later rather than sooner, and there's been no update for three weeks on that. Um, I mean, do, do you really want... Uh, a running back here where it seems like they play musical chairs in the backfield and you have to figure out which one's going to start or be playable on a weekly basis? I think the answer is no. You just want Herbert and you want Keenan Allen and that's about it. So the interesting thing is that they re um, they reverted Balazs today back to the practice squad. So they didn't even leave him on the elevated team. So he's (laughs) They reverted Balazs back to the practice squad. Uh, um, <laughs> that's a son of a man. That's a slap in the face is that, right? So, like, so I, maybe I mean, they're hoping that I, Troy Main Pope I really comes hope back. that people go and pick him up. Yeah, and just spend all the fab on I him. Mean, and then he's on the practice squad should, and doesn't play. Yeah, you should. Yeah, people should start sending out a text message to be like, how much are people bidding on Balazs? Yes. Yeah. And for that reason, it out, should be a Bellagio and bid zero. Just oh, kidding. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, I, he should not be rostered. No, I don't think he should either because I think 
you know, in all likelihood, Troy Main Pope comes back from his concussion and he was seeing carries over Josh Kelly, you know, the the week that he got concussed. What was it last week or the week before? So I don't know. I yeah. I wouldn't you yep. want you want Justin Jackson, Austin Eckler in that offense, and after that it's like a crapshoot. So and then our last injury replacement is I just keep it. Yeah. Our last injury replacement is Miles Gaskin with a knee injury placed on IR, so he will be out several weeks. Um, Matt Breida has a hamstring injury. He was out. So then you get good old Jordan Howard, who is ineffective with the ball in his hands, and Salvin <laughs> Ahmed, or Ahmed, I, I don't know, uh, led the team with 38 Ahmed. rushing yards. Are you picking up Howard or Ahmed? Don't answer so I fast. I have Jordan Howard in the league that that we play in. Um, and he has 28 rushes for 33 yards and four touchdowns. Um, Is that good? I feel like that's good. I, I don't think... I mean... The amount of fantasy points per touch is quite high, if we're being honest. Um, I can't believe that you even he's just averaging a like spot one yard to carry on Jordan Howard. Well, no, is we didn't know what he was going to do. I was assuming he was going to have like fifteen to twenty carries, um, and so he he didn't. Um, and now I will safely drop him back into the the sea of waivers. Um, I will not be picking up any replacement for him. Um, I will probably be picking up Miami's defense in his stead. There you go. Not a bad, not a bad play there. Uh, well, I don't think that Selvin Ahmed or Jordan Howard, um, I guess, I don't think either one of them leads the carry leads the, that backfield in carries next week. Anyway, even if miles Gaskin and Matt Breda are out again, because they did trade for DeAndre Washington from the Chiefs right before the deadline. And he had to sit out because of COVID protocols. So I wouldn't be shocked or surprised if DeAndre Washington actually ends up leading that backfield and touches next week. And I think that he could make for like a sneaky ad, um, depending on how long Breed is out. Um, because you know Gaskin's on IR, so you, you could potentially get at least a couple of weeks out of DeAndre. So, you know, if you're desperate, DeAndre Washington yeah. is out so, there. And, yeah, and, th- and that's a zero bid because he's not on anybody's radar. Yeah, you can get him for free. Um, let's see, is he rostered anywhere? Um, let's see here. I highly doubt it. Yes, I also highly doubt it. Washington. DeAndre Washington is rostered in zero riveting zero point seven percent of leagues. So there is some deep fantasy football thinkers out there, such as myself. <clears throat> some people try try too hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's the fantasy people that you know you think that they know more than everybody else that roster people like that, right? It's like, oh, this guy. He's going to be my league winner. Oh, man. All right. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that was that was me with like Ryan Terrain back in the day. I love that guy. Like, I didn't care what team he was on for like two years. He was like on my roster because I loved me some Ryan Terrain because he he had one half until he tore his ACL in like week seven of 2000. Uh, yeah, 2009, uh, 2008 season. Um he had like 14 fantasy points in the first half and then tore his ACL and I don't think he ever played in a game again. So Ouch. my guy, Ryan Terrain, love him. Mine mine was always Sean Green just because he went to Iowa and he was great at Iowa and then just did almost uh, nothing. Oh, do you remember NFL. those those like the like week 17 and like two playoff games he had and then he went in like the first round and then did absolutely nothing the next year? That yeah, was great. I think I, I think I drafted him that year, but... Oh, man. All right. Let's get on to an actual viable pickup, and that is J.D. McKissick. He's rostered in about a third (laughs) of leagues. Seriously, I'm not I'm not even lying about him. He had 14 targets. Yeah, no. 
Nine catches, 65 yards, plus three rushes for 17 yards. Look, I'm not worried about the rushing stats. It's really just the receiving stats. He had a 36, 35.9% mm. target share in that offense. You have uh, a season ending <laughs> ankle injury for Kyle Allen. And then you put in Alex Smith, the check down machine of all check down machines to try and move that juggernaut. Yeah, he took the title back from Philip Rivers. Yeah, to move that juggernaut of uh, of an offense. <laughs> so, I mean, J.D. McKissick could have 10 plus targets a game for the rest of the season. So I, I would absolutely add J.D. McKissick. I think, I don't think you have to spend much on him because it's a crappy offense and they're on their third quarterback. Do you, would you spend any fab trying to land JD? Uh, honestly, I'd spend a dollar um, just to try to give him over the zero bidders. His, I mean, his next three at Detroit, Cincinnati, at Dallas is really solid. Uh, the two weeks after that's Pittsburgh and San Francisco, which you're probably not going to be inclined to play him. But I mean, week 15 and week 16 is Seattle and Carolina. Um, yeah, I mean, um, if he's going to get that many touches, uh, there's not, you know, I mean, other than those two games, uh, against two pretty good defenses between uh, Pittsburgh and San Francisco. Those are all, he's playable. I mean, point blank, he is playable. If you're in a rough spot, I mean, he's, he's had, he's had over five points every week um, since week two with somewhat of a higher upside. If, if Alex Smith is just going to check down the whole time. So yeah, why not? I think the only way he loses value is if they start slowly taking his role away uh, over the second half of the season and give more touches to Antonio Gibson. But other than that, he's a great ad, um, especially in PPR. Like the guy is going to be crazy in PPR. All right. Uh, I think that does it for running backs, given the plethora of injuries. Did I miss anyone? Is there anyone you would like to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, just real quick, Bryce Love theoretically is coming back uh, within the next couple of weeks, so maybe they kind of retire J.D. McKissick and funnel some of that over to Bryce Love. Um, uh, Mark Ingram is still available in 48.1% of leagues. Uh, he's coming back. Hey, you can puke all you want, but they're going to play him over, over J.K. Dobbins, and he might get goal line carries, or if that's Gus. I mean... We we talked about Dobbins last week, and I understood if you wanted to go for the Dobbins thing, but I don't I don't know if anybody's playable in that offense where you know what they're going to give you on a week to week basis. So Mark Ingram's Mark Ingram's available, just bringing his name up. Naheem Hines, he's rostering forty two point nine percent of leagues, which is a boost um, from where he was last week, which I think was down in the thirties. Um, their schedule is just so good the next four weeks. Uh, it's one of the easiest stretches in all of football at Tennessee, Green Bay, Tennessee again, and at Houston. Those are like three of the like five worst rush defenses or uh, or defenses giving up fantasy points to running backs. Like you could not ask for better matchups. So between him or Jordan Wilkins... Jordan Wilkins is only owned in 7% of leagues. Naheem Hines, 42.9. I understand if you want to go out and grab either one of them. It seems like Jordan Wilkins fits the type of offense that Frank Reich wants to run um, with, you know, hit the hole hard. Um, Jordan Wilkins seems to do that. So I, I know we talked about Jordan, uh, Jonathan Taylor last week and are looking for him to turn it on and he just hasn't. So I, I don't know what you think about either one of those. They're probably both zeros, right? Yeah, I would say that they're probably both zeros. I mean, I uh, yeah, uh, none of them, none of them, nobody in the Colts offense did anything that may, would make anybody run out and try to grab them. So I don't, I think that if they're not yep. already rostered in your league, you could get them for zero. Um, yeah, yep. Uh, Devonte Freeman is only rostered in forty two point one percent of leagues. So he's another guy that you maybe want to go out and get for a zero bid. Um, I talked about him last week, Rashad Penny, still only rostered in 2% of leagues. Theoretically, he's coming back at some point. Again, just guys to keep on your radar. Uh, and Frank Gore, I mean, he's still there, 12.5%. He's going to get 10 plus touches a week if he scores a touchdown. He's okay. Um, but that's pretty much all I had to add. Yeah, those are like, if you're really desperate, those, those, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I, I'd Absolutely. rather hold on to J.K. Dobbins than Frank Gore, but just for the upside. Um. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, and then that does it for running backs. Let's talk about wide receivers. I think my waiver waiver wire priority out of the week is Jalen Rager. Uh, he had six targets for th- your uh, guy. He turned into three catches for 16 yards and a score. He also scored on a two point conversion and he would have had a 30, 31 yard touchdown, but it was knocked out in the end zone um, by Dallas. Now he was on by this week. This, these stats that I'm giving are from his first game back against Dallas two weeks ago. Um, yeah. I mean, he's, he had six targets. It was only one target behind Fulgham who has been what a top 15 receiver while Rager's and everybody else has been out and since starting. So week 10, he has the giants, Cleveland, then Seattle, then green Bay, then new Orleans, then Arizona, then Dallas, like that Philadelphia schedule is absolutely crazy. So I want whoever's going to be scoring the points for them in that offense Um, I could absolutely see Jalen Rager taking over more of that, uh, you know, wide receiver one role. He has the draft pedigree and the skill to excel over the second half of the season, kind of like Debo did last year. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he Mm -hmm. finishes like a rest of the season wide receiver two or better. So I'm all about, you know, if Jalen Rager's out there, he should be picked up. He's only rostered in 14 and a half percent of leagues, which I think is just a crime. Uh, we talked about him here last week. We've talked about yep. him a lot. This is like the most unprecedented year for rookie receivers. And I just think Jalen Rager is another one of them that will be able to produce. So what do you think about Jalen? How much fab are you spending? Yeah. Co- coming into week nine um, before this week, and we've not updated our, our defensive statistics allowed on our website and i promise that's getting posted maybe soon um the the philadelphia eagles had the second easiest schedule for wide receivers from week nine to week 16 so uh, the only the only team ahead of them was the bears like jalen rager and travis and travis travis fulgum it's going to be their show um and you know that wentz likes to throw the ball um and miles sanders is still out i believe for the force like i I don't know when he's coming back honestly honestly haven't even posted updates on him so yeah he i mean theoretically it's this week but i mean even if he does play they're not a prolific run offense they are pass first um so yeah for jalen rager um honestly i to make sure you get him i honestly think it's fair to have a 30 percent bid out there for him yeah and the, the latest on uh, Miles Sanders is from Ian Rappaport said that he is expected to return to practice this week. So we'll see. Okay. Hopefully he's able to play, but either way, I mean, that just helps that offense yeah, I, move more. I'm not, I don't feel like that takes anything away from Rager. I, w- I would rather go higher to make sure to get that. I get Rager because I don't want somebody I'm playing in the playoffs to have him. Oh, that, yeah. You know, even if you don't need him, you still take him away from somebody else. So, yeah. Right. Well, how much fab would you say you'd spend? I I think you could be willing to go up to 30%. I'm not wow. sure that you have to do that because he didn't play this week. Um, but I think he has that. Hey, I've gotten burned on so many rookie receivers and telling you, ah, you don't need to add Jefferson or you don't need to add Claypool or you don't need to add T. Higgins or like so... Yeah, screw it. Might as well, right? One of them's going to hit. They've all hit so far. Yeah, well, there's your dud, apparently, because you're welcome, America. Because <laughs> Alex likes him, so it must be a dud. <laughs> uh, I love it. No, Rager's going to hit. He's he's going to be great. I would absolutely pick him up everywhere. Yep. Um, my next yeah, how, how, where, where are you at on him you're, you're oh, somewhere in the 20 percent range 15%. yeah I, I couldn't go up to 30 that'd be bananas i mean if you have if you still have 30 percent of your fab in week 10 then you're probably doing it wrong because like you haven't made oh, any no you haven't made any meaningful ads up. then and you're sitting at two and seven and like struggling to make the playoffs because you know everybody had injuries <laughs> this year 
So then you just like didn't make any waiver ads and then you lost games. And now it's like, oh, this is going to be the week that there's the season ender. Does that sound familiar, Alex? OK, cool. Yeah, just the the big season ender is coming. Um, I don't know who it's going to be, but there's always, you know, it's it's going to be I'm Antonio not say Gibson. It's Delvin Cook. I was going to say it's going to be Antonio no, Gibson I'm not gonna... or yeah, it's going to be somebody that already has their backup on a team anyway, and it won't matter for you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or like James Connor or I mean, I could keep throwing out people's names that you will get injured, but I don't want to do that. I mean, I, come on, health for everybody. There you go. All right. Our next wide receiver ad is Curtis Samuel. Uh, he had nine targets, which he converted all nine into nine catches for 105 yards and a score. He also had wow. three rushes for 13 yards on the ground. Four touchdowns in his last three games. He's rostered in 42% of leagues. What do you think of Curtis Samuel? Can this offense support three receivers? He's been a man for the last three weeks now. I hate it. Yeah, I hate it because it means that one of the other two isn't doing so hot. Um, and, and yeah, isn't this kind of what we thought was going to happen though, where he would be productive and DJ Moore would be productive, but Robbie Anderson wouldn't be. Or something. Um, and it, th- that's, yeah, that's just not how it turned out to be the first couple weeks. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know what to do with this. Um, because I feel like week. when you pick him up and you play him, he, he's going to, they're going to burn you. Um, I mean, Tampa's, Tampa Bay's defense looked horrific um, against the same. I mean, they didn't even they didn't even look like they knew what coverages they were playing. Guys were just running around wide open. Um, man, I, to me, obviously I think you should be rostered. Um, I would not go on big Ben spend big money on him. Um, I still don't think he's worth more than 5%. Yeah, I would 5%. I've, maybe seven, you know, if you guys have listened to us, you know, the advice is never end your bids in a, uh, a five or a zero, because that's what most people end their bids in. If it's somebody you want just sprinkle in a couple extra bucks and you'll get them. So instead of a five bid, put down six or seven and I'm pretty confident you'll get them just because he's been so up or down yeah. and he was, you know, down single digit production, um, except for the last few weeks. So, and yes, Tampa Bay got absolutely lit up last night in what could maybe be called a football game, but like going into it, their defense was <laughs> good. So I don't know what happened against the Saints. Yeah, though. they were great. So our next receiver is KJ Hamler, rostered in about 2% of leagues, had 10 targets against the Falcons that he turned into six catches for 75 yards. He also had a 15 yard rush. More than a 20%, more than a 22% target share in that offense. Uh, Rostered in 1.9% of leagues. Alex, are you spending any fab trying to land KJ Hamler or or do you care about KJ? No, I don't really care. Uh, I think he should remain on the waiver wire. Um, He is a guy that had a good matchup against Atlanta and I, once that goes away, I think he goes back to, um, below mediocrity, um, and doesn't need to be rostered. Yeah. Three for 13 and a score against the chargers the week before six for 75 this week. Um, it's just, it's hard. Cause I don't know if drew lock, they, they got behind and they threw a ton. Yeah, and I don't know if Drew Locke is good. I, I'm still undecided on that because for like three quarters, he was garbage. And then the fourth quarter, he wasn't anymore. And so I'm just curious. I mean, I'd much rather have Jerry Judy, who I think is probably like a top 30 rest of season. Um, like 14 crazy yeah. targets. But for Hamler, I just don't know if this offense can support two receivers. So... No. I, yeah, you could it's, it's no fan when he's healthy. Yeah, you could roster him, but like, I wouldn't want to start him unless it was the most plus of plus matchups like Atlanta again. So, yep, I agree. 
So I would, I think I'd probably go less than 5%, a buck or two. And if, yeah, or zero. Let him um, be, let him be. Next up, we have Danny Amendola, rostered in just over 7% of leagues, had 10 targets that he turned into seven catches for 77 yards. He also had a rush for two yards and 12 fantasy points. Uh, everybody thought it was going to be the Marvin Jones show with Galladay out. It was not. It was Danny Amendola with 10 targets. So what do you feel about Danny Amendola? I mean, it still was the Marvin Jones show. I mean, he had more fantasy points than Danny Amendola. Um, I um, I don't know. Probably the same way I feel about KJ Hamler. <laughs> I mean, I, I think Galladay. I mean, Galladay is coming back. I or he's he was week to week. Um, I hope Kenny Galladay comes back, um, brings his saxophone with him. Uh, t- tough matchup against. Um, Washington this week, who's giving up the least amount of fantasy points to wide receivers. Um, so I, I think you just leave him on the waiver wire, um, especially if Galladay comes back. Um, if you want to go out and get him, hey, your prerogative. Um, Britney Spears song, I believe. That's it's my prerogative. My prerogative. Um, so if um, I, I think I think he just stays on the waiver wire and um, yeah, I you can you can have them if you want them, but this is a zero bit if if you're feeling frisky, as you would say. Feeling frisky. Yeah, absolutely with you on the zero bit there. Um, I don't know. Danny Amendola is like the... To me, he's like the dollar store version of Cole Beasley. It's like these guys are just... They're going to get some catches <laughs> and some yards and things, but like they're never going to blow you away for like 15 points or more. So... You know, Beasley's had the season of a lifetime for him, but yeah, I don't, I don't, Danny Amendola doesn't do it for me. I would do a zero bid if I was desperate. So our next receiver. There's much, there's much better people available than Danny Amendola. Yes. Our next receiver is Michael Pittman Jr. Rostered in 4% of leagues. T.Y. Hilton out, not healthy. Shocker. Um, Michael Pittman had seven targets, four catches for 56 yards, only rostered in 4% of leagues. I think he's another less than 5% bid that you could add to the end of your bench if you wanted to. Nothing super exciting there. What about you? Even though the matchups like across the board are going to be good for that offense. Yep, absolutely. Uh, zero bid. Um, no need to spend any of your hard earned fab money uh, on. Michael Pittman Jr. (laughs) Uh, Somebody I think that you should add and should spend some hard-earned fab money on is Jacoby Myers. (laughs) Jacoby Myers had uh, six catches for 58 yards against Buffalo last week. Um, He's up to 10 catches. Yeah, 10 for 130. 10 for 130. Which is crazy. Uh, he's only rostered in five and a half percent of leagues. Is Jacoby Myers the guy? Uh, I mean, with Julian Edelman out, it certainly seems like it. Um, I mean, it's possible he has a touchdown. There's five. We're there's five minutes left in the game um, as we're recording during a Monday Night Football. Um, yeah, it seems like it seems like he's the guy. So. Um, I mean, Julian Edelman doesn't seem like he's coming back anytime soon. Uh, there really hasn't been anybody else that's impressed. Um, so yeah, I think Jacoby Myers probably somewhere. I, if you have a league where people always watch Monday Night Football and see him balling out, they'll probably throw a little bit higher of a bid here. Um, so I think you're going to have to go in that six to seven percent range to potentially get him. Yeah, um, because the last two weeks uh, he looks more than playable. Yeah. The only thing is they do have Baltimore this week. So I wouldn't want to be playing Jacoby Myers in, in week, week 10. Well, I, so, I mean, the Patriots are losing to the jets. I think the, the uh, Ravens are going to destroy the, the Patriots. Um, So the game script might actually be there for him to still be fine. 
in the fourth quarter when they're losing by 30 points and then he can get his stats. Hey, that's uh, that's what my guy did. Darnell Mooney um, for the Bears. Uh, he had 11 targets this week. So what do you think about that guy? He's OK. I don't know. They also, you yeah. know, got behind and had to chuck it a ton. And that offense looks like hell. It's true. So, yeah, he's rostering only 15 percent of leagues. Um, I actually picked him up and played him over Zeke in a PPR league this week, and that proved to be correct. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so how if did I you myself not tell on me that, that one, you were making that start? Oh my god! Yeah, I'll say, I would have yeah, put I was, that out I was everywhere. Proud of that one. Yeah, oh bing my. bang boom. Um, so I, <laughs> we already talked about it a little bit, but I mean, the Bears have the easiest schedule both the rest of season from a wide receiver standpoint and in the playoffs. Uh, if Darnell Mooney's going to be getting all of these targets, then yeah, I th- I think you should roster him. Um, I mean, I think he's had five plus targets every week since week two. Um, so I, I think he is startable, uh, especially in a PPR league. Um, and again, he seems to be their deep, deep threat. They didn't really take any deep shots. Um, but I mean, Mooney almost had a touchdown where he couldn't get two feet in uh, at the end of that game. Um, so just saying, I think he's probably a zero bid, but I think you should definitely add him. I like it. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on the zero bid aspect of that as well. Um, all right, next up, we have another late ad due to his performance tonight, and that is Brashad Perriman currently has five catches, 101 yards and two scores. The Jets are on a buy. Do you care about Brashad Perriman? No, but at the same time, that was with Crowder playing, who also has a touchdown. Um, so, I mean, Crowder seemed like he was the guy that was going to have five or s- five to seven catches every week um, when when playing. And Perriman's been good the last couple of weeks. Um, one of those weeks was was when Crowder wasn't playing, but Crowder's playing and he's producing. Um, I, I think he let him sit for a week. Uh, somebody wants to carry him over a bye week again. It's still the Jets offense. Um, I, you don't really want to put, have too many guys, uh, from the Jets offense on your rosters or you're probably losing. Um, so <laughs> I think you could probably just let them sit out there. If somebody else wants them more power to them. Mm, the Jets are currently beating the Patriots 27, 20 with five and a half left, but yikes. Oh man. All right. Well, glad we got that out of the way. Um, Let's move on, shall we, to tight ends, unless you have a is there a receiver oh, I missed? Yeah, I got I got two more two more. Um if somebody were to drop Corey Davis um after a zero point week against the Bears, um he, he is rostered in 60% of leagues. Um last week it was 36.7. So, you know, there could be that 24% of people that added him, and then there's gonna be all those people that drop him again. Um I mean this week was the first week um, that he didn't have 10 points and a half PPR uh, league. So he had 10 back to back week, 10 targets coming into this week. Obviously, that didn't happen against the Bears. So if somebody were to drop Corey Davis, I think you should go out and get him. Um, even with a potential rough matchup, it softens up for him. And he's been productive with with the thrill ride that is Ryan. Um, so I, I think you should look at potentially adding Corey Davis if somebody drops him. And then my my wide receiver sleeper of the week. Oh, wow. Um, is is Josh Reynolds. Oh, um, wow. So. If you're having buy problems, I feel bad for you, son. I know you got 99 players, but Josh Reynolds wasn't one. So hear me out on this. He's got Seattle this week and Seattle is currently on pace to give up a thousand more yards than the worst defense ever from a yardage perspective. A thousand more yards in a season. Is that bad? And Josh Reynolds, that's that's not good. Um, and Josh Reynolds, the two weeks before they're coming off of bye week, the Rams are and the two weeks before they he had eight targets and nine targets. So I think he's playable. Um, 
So that's that's like my deep sleeper of the week. I think he's only rostered in like 12% of leagues or something really low like that. 1%. Um, so if you're in a rough spot, one it's only one. My guy. So if that's the case, I, I do think Josh Reynolds is available. You can get him for cheap. You can get him for zero bucks. And I think you can play him. And I'm going to go on record and say he's going to score a touchdown this week. Okay. Didn't you say that... Uh... Frank Gore was going to score a touchdown this week because I chastised how bad I did because I chastised I how did. bad he hey. was going to do after you recommended him. And he currently has 12 rushing attempts for 46 yards and two catches for 13, seven points. You could do a lot worse than that. Yeah. Uh, he's one touchdown away from having like a top 10 week. That's incredible. The, the Jets have, they had 27 points this week, um, and unfortunately, he didn't back it in the end zone. So I'm sorry, but Josh Reynolds will. If I go to the well enough times, I'm going to be right eventually. Lord. All right, let's move on to tight end, shall we? Uh, my recommended tight end pickup of the week. Uh, the only one I think I care about to add, uh, you know, that really sets himself apart from the rest of the pack is Austin Hooper. Uh, he's only rostered in 40% of ESPN leagues. He has had 23 targets in the last three games. There's no OBJ. They're going to have to pass. I really like Austin Hooper. I think he's a fantastic ad. And uh, as you know, the former Kittle manager, that's who I targeted. I spent the rest of my fab on him, um, which was a mistake because nobody else even bid on him. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but, <laughs> but I did get him. And that's what matters. So I'm pumped for Austin Hooper it and feels the rest good. of this season. Yeah. So. Um, he, yeah, no, I get it. What fab um, would you I, spend on you, him? you might be able to get him with a zero bid this week. Wow. Like, if he's coming off a bye week, people might still be sleeping on it. Um, theoretically, he's healed from his appendectomy um so yeah why why not um I, I think he's clearly the ad at the tight end spot if he's available um and uh, if you're if you don't want to risk it i get why you would go six percent um otherwise i i think i think you can probably get away with a zero bid um on him just because he hasn't scored anything in six weeks or uh, sorry three weeks um and people probably aren't paying attention to him okay i'll allow it but uh, yeah, it, yeah. I think Austin Hooper's the ad, and hopefully you're not that desperate to go elsewhere. But yeah, clearly, uh, clearly the ad. The the only other two tight ends that I would even somewhat recommend one's Tyler Higby, who's been super disappointing this year. Um, we talked during the preseason that he was the ultimate boomer bust tight end, um, where if he finished the way he did last year then you had an absolute league winner or he was going to bust and he's done nothing except for a three touchdown week. Again, he's playing Seattle, uh, who's terrible. Um, Tyler Higby is available in 49.8% of leagues. Um, and I do think he is playable this week. So um, that's one guy that I, that I think you could pick up if you were in a jam spot. Um, and also if you're in ESPN leagues, um, I mean, do you think Taysom Hill is, is pick up and playable? Uh, we we kind of joke that he was my guy in the preseason. Um, uh, but I mean, if they're going to, if they're going to give him as many touches as he had and he didn't even score a touchdown yesterday and, and he was one of the better tight ends in fantasy this week. Um, is he playable? Do you think that he only got those touches because they were up by 30 at halftime, though? Like, you know what I mean? No. Well, they, I mean, they, they gave him a s three straight plays where um, he moved the ball in the second half. But, I mean, he was... He threw a pass in the first quarter. That's um, true. So, I, d I don't know. Like, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I'm just saying that he's one of those guys where, I mean, if, if you're going to make the playoffs and want to have a little fun and really talk some smack to your opponent about starting Taysom Hill at tight end, it could be fun for a week. It might not work, but um, I would have beat you it, had I started. It's one of those Taysom things where Hill, you'd be rooting so. really hard. 
Yeah, and if it, and if it would have worked, holy crap! The amount of the amount of stuff I would have heard from you. Oh well, you know, you live and you learn. Start Taysom Hill next time. That's that's what I learned. <laughs> that's what. Yeah. <laughs> Come to the teacher. Get taught a lesson. Oh Lord! Anything else you want to teach me? Um, I. I'll go back to the well again on this. The Miami defense is only rostered in 20% of leagues. Um, and I said before the season, they were going to be a top 10 defense. Um, coming into last week, they, and I think they're still defense six in fantasy. My guys, the Dolphins defense, they got healthy and they got good. They have three touchdowns in the last two weeks. Um, the next three Yikes. weeks, they play the Chargers at Denver and at the New York Jets. So there is some opportunity there where they're going to continue to pile up some numbers. Um, so Miami defense would be the uh, the defense that I'm recommending. Would you start them against the Chargers? I feel like that I would avoid that game because Herbert's been unbelievable. Yeah, so here's the thing with that. I think it depends on the way that your defense scoring is set up. If they count yards and you would lose points because of giving up yards, then I would not start them. Um, but if the yards are not a component of your defense scoring, then yeah, I think you can still start them. Hmm. Okay. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us. So if you enjoyed any part of this show tonight, please hit that like button, subscribe on whatever platform you are listening and or watching on. And if you're on YouTube, please ring the bell and subscribe so you can get those notifications whenever we post hot content just like this. Um, we hope you guys all go and check out our League Winning Trades podcast that we put out last week. Um, we talked through players at every position that we think one. you're going to... Yeah, we talked through players at every position we think are going to excel during the playoffs um, and be those fantasy MVPs that bring people titles. Uh, Derek Henry was a lot of it. So that playoff schedule, man, but go check it out. Go to our website, check out the spreadsheet, who all has the plus matchups at each position, uh, who they're playing. And uh, yeah, the fantasy football And uh, thank you guys for listening. I bought a minivan tonight before we recorded and I've never had dad mo mode more activated in my entire life. Every league I'm in is in big trouble. I'm just trying to stay awake. I got skunked by you last night and then my dog decided to go outside. Well, they, we let him outside every night. So I let my <laughs> dogs out at one o'clock in the morning. There's a skunk in the backyard. The dog attacks it gets sprayed, comes inside at 1.15, <laughs> drooling, <laughs> like whining, tail between his legs. <laughs> Our house smells like skunk. It's in every room. We washed the dog four times. <laughs> we threw her collar away. We've washed the blankets that she slept on. We, we went room to room last night. We literally went room to room. And then Katie left me <laughs> asleep with the dog and to go sleep by herself. And she, this is that this happened from one to two 30 in the morning. Katie had to leave for work at five 15. So I'm just like today, if I was tired, I am sorry. I am dealing with a, a hound dog that just won't stop attacking stuff. Especially the fuzzy little. What was animals. the worst? What was the worst part of last night for you? Losing to me by less than a point or your dog getting skunked? Oh, the skunk for sure. I got I woke up. I was asleep and I woke up to Katie screaming in a bathrobe out the back door at our dog. And I thought somebody was dying. Like I did. I was just I had no oh, idea. You didn't let the skunk on. in. The skunk. I mean, I'm trying to get our other dog inside the house. Who's out there barking at the skunk while Bailey's inside being helped by Katie. And then I got a four pound chihuahua 
sitting barking at the skunk who's hobbling on one leg trying to get back under the fence <laughs> and it was and i'm in underwear in my backyard and we have neighbors on all sides and it was <laughs> it was like i couldn't believe nobody called the police and thought it was like a domestic disturbance but it was yeah so and then i lost by 0.86 fantasy points like two hours three hours before that so it was a lovely sunday it was a great weekend and and that concludes the first edition of Sacco Stories. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.